Solomon Islands. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez as we end today's show remembering the world-renowned Buddhist monk, anti-war activist, poet and teacher Thich Nhat Hanh. He died Saturday in his native Vietnam at the age of 95. Thich Nhat Hanh was exiled from Vietnam for decades, beginning in the 60s, after he spoke out publicly against the war. In 1966, he traveled to the U.S. and met with Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., helping to persuade Dr. King to speak out against the U.S. war in Vietnam. King went on to nominate Thich Nhat Hanh for a Nobel Peace Prize a year later, calling him an apostle of peace and nonviolence. In 1969, Thich Nhat Hanh led a Buddhist delegation to the Paris peace talks that resulted in accords between North Vietnam and the United States. He believed Buddhist principles should be applied to everyday life and even to solve difficult political problems. In 2001, on September 25th, two weeks after the 9-11 attacks, Thich Nhat Hanh spoke at the historic Riverside Church here in New York, where Dr. Martin Luther King first spoke out publicly against the Vietnam War. The subject of Thich Nhat Hanh's speech was embracing anger. This is part of his address that Democracy Now! aired the next day. My dear friends, I would like to tell you how I practice when I get angry. During the war in Vietnam, there was a lot of injustice, injustice, and many thousands of friends of mine, many disciples of mine were killed. I got very angry. One time I learned that the city of Bến Tre 300,000 people was uh, bombarded by American aviation just because uh, some uh, guerrillas uh, came to the city and uh, tried to shoot down American aircraft. They did not succeed, and after that they went away and the city was destroyed. And uh, the military man who was responsible for that declared later that uh, he had to destroy the city of Bente in order to save it. I was very angry. But at that time, I was already a practitioner, solid practitioner. I did not say anything. I did not uh, act, because I knew that uh, acting or saying things while you are angry is not wise. It may create a lot of destruction. I went back to myself, recognizing my anger, embracing it, and look deeply into the nature of my suffering. I was able to understand the nature of the suffering in Vietnam. I saw that not only, not only Vietnamese uh, suffer, but uh, America suffered as well during the war in Vietnam. The American young men who were sent to Vietnam to kill and to be killed, they underwent a lot of suffering. And the suffering continues even today. Their family, the nation also. I could see that uh, the cause of our suffering in Vietnam is not the American soldiers. It is a kind of policy that is not wise. It is a mis misunderstanding. It is fear that lies at the foundation of the policy. And many of us in Vietnam have had, had uh, burned themselves in order to call for a cessation of the destruction. We did not want to inflict 
pain on our on other people. We want to take the pain on ourselves in order to get the message uh, across. But the sound of bombs and mortars was too loud. People in the world, not many of them, were capable to 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 hear us. So I decided to go to America and call for a cessation of the violence. That was in 1966, and because of that, I was re prevented to go home, and I began my exile since that time, 1966. Because I was able to see that the real enemy of man is not uh, the real enemy uh, uh, of man is not man. It is uh, ignorance, discrimination, fear, craving, and violence. And that is why I did not have hate vis-à-vis -vis the American people, the American nation. So I came in order to plead for a kind of looking deeply so that your government could revise that policy. I remember I met with Secretary uh, of Defense uh, Robert uh, McNamara, and I told him the truth about the suffering. He kept me uh, with him for a long time, and he listened deeply to me, and I was uh, very grateful for his quality of uh, listening. And uh, three months later, when the war was intensified, I hear that he resigned from his uh, post. Hatred and uh, anger was not in my heart. That is why I was listened to by many young people in my country, advocating them to follow the path of reconciliation. And together we have helped uh, bring about uh, the negotiations uh, for peace in Paris. I hope my friends here in New York are able to practice the same. I understood, I understand suffering and un injustice. And uh, I feel that I understand deeply the suffering of New York, of America. I feel I am a New Yorker. I feel I am an American. We want to be there for you, to plead with you, not to act, not to say things when you are not calm. There are ways that we can go back to ourselves and practice so that we rediscover our calmness, our tranquility, our lucidity, there are ways by which we can look deeply to understand the real causes of uh, the suffering. And that understanding will help us to do what needs to be done and not to do what uh, could be harmful to us and to other people. And uh, if we can listen to each other, we can also listen to the people outside of the country. Many of them are in a situation of despair. Many suffer because of injustice and discrimination. The amount of violence and despair in them is very huge. And if we know how to listen as a nation to their suffering, 
we can already bring a lot of uh, relief. They feel that they are being understood. They can defuse the bomb already. World-renowned Buddhist monk, anti-war activist, poet and teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, speaking just two weeks after the September 11th attacks right here in New York at Riverside Church. Thich Nhat Hanh died Saturday at the age of 95. For more, we are joined by his longtime friend and fellow peace activist, Father John Deere, former director of the Fellowship of Reconciliation, the group that first brought Thich Nhat Hanh to the United States in the 1960s. Um, Father Deere, welcome back to Democracy Now! Uh, that was when he met with um, Dr. Martin Luther King influenced him to write uh, the speech against the war in Vietnam, and then King nominated Thich Nhat Hanh for a Nobel Peace Prize. Talk about your relationship. Thank you so much, Amy, and thank you for playing that beautiful clip. So I knew Ty from um, because of my friendship with Daniel Berrigan and because I was the director of Fellowship of Reconciliation, but I, I had been in contact with him in the late 80s and early 90s. Remember, Amy, the Fellowship Reconciliation is the, is the group that brought him to the United States in 1966. And our friend John Heidbrink was the genius who set this up. His idea was, nobody knew who Thich Nhat Hanh was. I need to bring, introduce this unknown Vietnamese monk to the three most important religious leaders in the United States, Martin Luther King, Thomas Merton, and Daniel Berrigan. And that was brilliant. And each of them were changed by Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, Dr. King said he'd never met anybody like him. And same with Thomas Merton. And then Daniel Berrigan became very close with him. And after Dan got out of prison, moved to Paris and lived with him in 1974 and 75. Um, you know, and so I, I, uh, Met him, though. I spent a day with him when I became the executive director of the Fellowship of Reconciliation in the late uh, 90s and knew him up till uh, actually spent a day with him shortly before his massive stroke in 2016 in Plum Village. So I got to know him personally and talk about all these things, our friends, especially Daniel Berrigan, peace movement, nonviolence. He was always challenging me and criticizing me, but wow, he was really an embodiment of peace and gentleness and nonviolence. He practiced what he pe preached. And his message to me in the peace movement in the United States was, be the peace you want to seek. He had that sentence, to practice nonviolence, you have to become nonviolence. And he did that. So all his teachings about engaged Buddhism and mindfulness and living in the present moment of peace and being as nonviolent as you can to yourself and everyone, and part of the engagement in the world, as you saw in that speech of disarming the world, he said it's really important to activists who care about justice and disarmament and creation. We more than all have to be on our game and totally centered in peace 24 seven. And um, it was a great pleasure and joy to know the great man. I had a feeling every time I was with him, it was like being with Gandhi, you know. He well, was so peaceful. Well, Father dear, um, we're going to do a part two with you, talking about the life of Thich Nhat Hanh. You were also a dear friend of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who we also lost in the last weeks. And we'll talk about him as well. Father John Deere, longtime peace activist, Catholic priest, executive director of the Beatitude Center, now in Big Sur, California. That does it for our show, Democracy Now!, produced with Renee Fels, Mike Burke, Dina Gesner, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Maria Tarasena, Tammy Warren of Trinandura. Special thanks to Julie Crosby. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.